Hey everybody, I'm excited to be back for week nine of our Effects on Violin series. We're gonna be talking about Ottawa this week, not the capital of Canada, but the effect that you can sometimes use on your violin. Oh, he's got jokes. All right, so this is just a quick recap. Uh, each week in this series, we're gonna hit a different effect. We'll kind of tell you the science behind that effect, how it works, what the knobs and the buttons are, where you can get one. And then most weeks, we're gonna bring in a guest artist to talk about how they use that effect in their music. This week, we're gonna be talking to my friend Joseph Nodge. Just got a chance to hang out with him at the NAMM show in Los Angeles. And there's gonna be a link to that interview with him right here. It's gonna be separate from this video. So, last week we talked about wah, and that is the one that you see on the floor, people working it with their foot and it changes the sound, right? So what does that pedal do? You see people moving their foot around. It is a sweepable band pass filter and you can control the center frequency with your foot. Similar to auto wah, we'll, we'll run through what some of the characteristics of wah are that are the same as auto wah and then we'll talk about how they're different. Okay, so this is a bit of a recap from last week. Uh, if, this, if I'm going through this too fast and this doesn't make a lot of sense, I talked about it for a little bit longer last time and you can go check out that video. So what is a band pass filter? Well, it allows a band of frequencies to pass and everything else is cut. That's kind of what it looks like on an RTA or an EQ chart. So you can see that blue center frequency band. Those things are passing, everything else is cut. And when we say it's sweepable, it means that the center frequency of that band can be swept from low to high and this is kind of what that would look like on the diagram. It's in a dynamic environment. So that, that frequency band is moving as you're playing. Now, how it moves is different for a wah pedal and a auto wah pedal, but essentially as it was moving back and forth, we've got two end positions and one we would call a heel down where the low frequencies pass and the other one we would call more of a toe down where the high frequencies are passing. Now, the difference between wah and auto wah is that with a wah pedal, you use your foot to control that frequency. So we got low frequencies passing, high frequencies passing. Auto wah uses your volume to accomplish that. So a quiet volume, you're playing very light, would be a heel down position. And as you get louder, then that's that, that virtual pedal is gonna rock toward the toe being down, which means the high frequencies will pass, okay? Every pedal is different. You can buy uh, auto wah pedals from a number of different manufacturers, but there are some sort of common parameters in those. One is gonna be sensitivity, which is how it reacts to your playing. If it's very, very sensitive, then you know small changes in volume are gonna make it uh, change a lot. If it's not very sensitive, then changes in volume are not gonna make it react as much. How much do you want it to react to your changes in volume? That's sensitivity. Now, we said that heel down was quiet and toe down was loud. Well, it's just, it's just electronics, so we can flip that if we want. Uh, it's kind of strange, but uh, you'll hear in a demonstration in just a second what it sounds like if we reverse the polarity on that and make uh, playing loud with the heel and then playing quiet would be the toe down. Q is how wide that frequency band is. So if we want a very narrow band of frequencies to be moving around, that's one side of Q. If we want a wide band of frequencies moving around, that would be the other side of Q. Uh, drive is just kind of how much dirt is in that signal. If we want it to be a little more aggressive, a little dirtier, you can turn the drive up. And then decay, it's attack and decay are kind of the two things that you would see together. And that is how fast does it move that virtual pedal, how fast does it move when you change volume? So we're gonna have a little quick demonstration. You're gonna hear uh, two different uh, auto wah pedals and I'll change a couple of the settings on those and you'll get to hear those. Here's a uh, kind of a medium decay. Very 
fast decay. Very long decay. Yeah, that last one is weird. I'm so used to using the uh, the normal polarity that uh, we would call it that up polarity that down is really strange for me. Uh, anyway, that's a little bit of a demonstration. If you want to hear a lot more about this, again, the interview with Joseph Nodge is going to have a bunch of video clips of him playing some different things with different auto wah pedals, and he will be talking extensively about how he uses those with his music. Now, where would we put this in a signal chain? There's not really any rules here. You probably want to experiment with placement. Uh, you probably want to put it before your time-based effects, like reverb and delay. And then you're also going to want to think about anything that's got compression in it. So drive pedals, overdrive pedals, um, compressor pedals. If you're shrinking your dynamic range, you may have to adjust the sensitivity on your auto wah pedal because it you know depends on your volume to do its job. So you want to think about that. Um, when to choose wah versus auto wah? Obviously, you can use wah anytime you want for that effect, and it gives you the ability to control exactly where you are in the where that frequency is uh, with your foot. But you're kind of stuck to your pedal board. If you're if you like to be running around a stage, uh, then you can't be doing that if you're using a wah. Uh, auto wah allows you to be free of the pedal board and it also allows for perfect synchronization between the playing if you're doing chopping or whatever uh, you'd have to sort of get your foot synchronized with your right hand and sometimes that can be a little harder so that's just if you want for perfect synchronization you can use the auto wah if you want to be free of your pedal board and you want to be able to run around a stage or whatever auto wah is great for that if you want much more control over exactly what that sweepable band pass is doing independent of your right hand, then maybe you want the foot pedal, okay? So I hope that gives you an idea of what the auto wah pedal does and how you might distinguish between using that and using a regular wah pedal. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I hope you check out that interview with Joseph, very cool guy, fantastic player. And as always, subscribe to our channel, check out some other videos that we've got, and we will catch you guys next time.